What is going on, everybody? It is Treeb from Treeb Talks here, and it's Monday, so you know what that means. We are previewing a new position group here on the channel, and today we're talking about the most important position on any football team, and the position that's kind of been lingering the Jaguars for a long, long time. Of course, I'm talking about the quarterback position. It is an exciting time to be a Jaguars fan in 2019 because we finally have a quarterback that seems competent and seems like he can make all the throws necessary to have a very successful team next year. We also have a backup quarterback that Treb is a big, big fan of, Mr. Gardner Minshew, the Washington State alum. We're going to be talking about both of those guys. I know we do have guys like Tanner Lee and Alex Magoo, but I don't think either one of them are going to be a factor. I think Tanner Lee gets cut. I think Magoo's the practice squad quarterback. So we're really going to be talking about our first string and our second string in Nick Foles and Gardner Minshew. And you also know what this week means. You know that we are going to be bringing on another special guest to the channel for a preview of a position. And this is a collaboration you guys in the comment section have been asking for for a solid year at least now. Ladies and gentlemen, on Wednesday, you are going to have a collaboration with Treep Talks and UCF Jaguar. UCF Jaguar will be on the channel to discuss the Jaguar quarterbacks on Wednesday. I'm very excited. I hope you guys are excited as well. But without further ado, let's get into this video. This is the Jaguars 2019 positional outlook for the quarterbacks. To start things off, we're going to be talking about Gardner Minshew. Now, this was one of the most excited I've ever been for a Jaguars draft pick when the Jags decided to select Gardner Minshew in the sixth round. Um, it was incredible. I think Gardner Minshew possesses a lot of talent and possesses basically every necessary skill you need to have in order to be a quarterback in today's NFL. He has quick decision making. His arm strength is a little questionable and we'll dive into that arm strength a little bit when we talk about the weaknesses. But the fact is this guy can get the ball out of his hands extremely, extremely quick. His decision making is fast. He does he goes through his reads very, very fast. And his eyes are always moving. You know, you don't see Gardner Minshew staring down a wide receiver. You know, you see him working through his progressions and making the smartest read possible in order to make his team successful. And that's what Gardner Minshew brings to the table. Now he's a little undersized standing at only six foot one. He's five inches shorter than Nick Foles. But you know, you've seen these shorter quarterbacks kind of succeed in the NFL. You got guys like Russell Wilson, obviously. And I mean he's the same height as a guy like Baker Mayfield. You know, Baker Mayfield last year came in tore the league apart last year for the Cleveland Browns. And basically, if you want a player comparison to compare Gardner Minshew to, you compare him to Baker Mayfield. Why? Because these guys are both winners every single place that they have been. You know, Gardner Minshew, if you haven't seen my Jags Origins video for Gardner Minshew, go ahead and do that. I'll link it in the description down below. But this guy, you know, he went the JUCO route. He went to three different colleges. He was the man at all three of these colleges, got the starting job. And when he ended up at Washington State, it was a perfect time because Washington State needed Gardner Minshew and Gardner Minshew needed Washington State. You know, Washington State was going through a very tough, tough, tragic time with the passing of the guy that was supposed to be their starting quarterback that year, Tyler Holinsky. It was tragic. It was a suicide attempt. Uh, you know, a successful suicide attempt, I should say. It was tragic. You know, everybody in the surrounding areas was very, very upset. And then here comes Gardner Minshew. It was almost like a gift from God to the Washington State football team. This guy went out, dominated, had a terrific 2018 season. Though he is not, he wasn't touted as a top quarterback out of his draft class. You know, he was considered a top quarterback in college football, and that should count for something. You know, he's not a guy that's going to do ridiculous things in the NFL. That's why he's a backup quarterback. You know, I'm not going to say Gardner Minshew could come in, beat out Nick Foles, get the starting job. But I'm saying if Nick Foles were to go down or if Gardner comes in when we're up by 40, 50 points, I think Gardner does his job and he does it well. And I'm also very excited to see what he does in the preseason because that's going to be our first, you know, real look at Gardner Minshew to see what he's going to be doing in a pro system. And hopefully he doesn't let me down because I've talked nothing but good things about him and I've talked him up really, really highly. Now, there are some things that Gardner Minshew does lack that he that you need to have to be a successful quarterback in the NFL. One thing is arm strength. Arm strength is one of the most important 
characteristics to an NFL quarterback. And Gardner Minshew doesn't have the strongest arm strength in the world. His deep accuracy is not that great. He's really good at evading pressure and making sure he finds his read, takes the smart throw. He doesn't really risk it. He doesn't risk it for the biscuit very often. He's not hucking 40-yard bombs. You know, he's he's making the smart read, going to go where he can go, get the first down, get the six yards, so, you know, it makes it a manageable third down you know he doesn't do anything extra and that's where Nick Foles and Gardner Minshew are completely different players obviously because Foles has the experience and you know the moxie that Super Bowl MVP obviously but you know Foles is a guy that wants to take that down the field shot Gardner Minshew is not so if Foles does go down you're going to have a tale of two completely different quarterbacks which is going to be weird it's going to be crazy to see how the offense you know kind of builds around Gardner Minshew if he's given the opportunity to come in and play a game during the regular season. It's going to be very, very interesting. But basically, the main knock on Gardner Minshew is his arm strength, and, you know, you really can't debate that. Even at Washington State, he wasn't necessarily taking these risky, ballsy throws. He's also not very mobile, but neither is Nick Foles. He's really good at evading pressure. You know, he's not a guy that's going to look to run, but he's good at, you know, making sure he can get out of the pocket, make plays, and make throws. You know, he's always looking to make the throw. He's not looking to run first. He's not a run first quarterback. Gardner Minshew, I'm very excited to see what he does for us. And overall, I'm going to be giving him a B-plus as a prospect. I think with all the positives that he has about his game, that outweighs the negatives. You know, the smart throws, you know, the able to go through his progression, the fact that he doesn't stare down his receivers, you know, those are things that good NFL quarterbacks have, and he has that, he just lacks the arm strength, so I think with the good characteristics he has, it's appropriate and it's okay to overlook, you know, maybe the couple of knocks that you have on Gardner Minshew, so a B plus as a prospect, a B plus as our backup quarterback, now we're going to be talking about the man that's going to come in under center and single-handedly save the Jacksonville Jaguar franchise. Now we're going to be talking about Nick Foles. Now Nick Foles was a guy that me personally at the beginning of the season, I didn't want anything to do with him. I didn't want to touch Nick Foles. I was like, we need to draft one of these rookies and we need to do it now. But, you know, when you take a step back, you look at it from a business standpoint and from an idea of winning football games, it makes sense. You know, these rookies, they could be outstanding, phenomenal players. You know, these Haskins, these Murrays, these Daniel Jones. Fuck Daniel Jones. We're not going to talk about him. But, you know, the Haskins and the Murrays, you know, maybe they will be successful. Maybe they will be winning quarterbacks. But you got a guy that's a Super Bowl MVP that's on the market and he wants to come play for you. Like, that was the big thing. I think Nick Foles wanted to come here. And he would have accepted, I think, an even lower contract, you know, but the front office likes to insist that it was based off of respect. So that's what he did, you know, getting paid $88 million a year. And, you know, it's it's going to be crazy because it's going to be different. You know, it's going to be way different. Blake Bortles and Nick Foles, two completely different quarterbacks. You know, Blake Bortles, not a natural thrower of the football. Nick Foles, a natural thrower of the football. Blake Bortles, not so good in the deep ball. Nick Foles makes his name out of the deep ball. You know, and like I said in a other video, I said in the wide receiver position outlook, I said they don't call him Big Dick Nick because his dick's necessarily big, but it probably is. It's because he makes these down the field risky throws. He's a winner and he wants to win first and foremost before he does anything. And that's why I think the Jaguars needed a guy like that. We don't need a guy that plays it safe, takes the short route, and goes, you know, the easy way. That like what Blake Bortles did. You know, there'd be a crosser third and eight. Gain three yards, let's punt the ball. Nick Foles is going to be trying to get you that eight yards down the field. He's not going to try and rely on these wide receivers to do stuff after the catch, even though there's a good amount of these wide receivers the Jags have in the receiver room that have the ability to do that. Nick Foles is not going to be the guy to do that. You know, he's going to throw the ball ahead of the sticks to the wide receiver in his hands, get the first down, move the chains, let's score. He's also a gamer, he's very competitive, and he's just now hitting his prime. I don't care what you say, like Nick Foles became a Super Bowl MVP, you know, one drop pass away by Alshon Jeffrey away from going to another Super Bowl. That That's very real. Like he had an opportunity to go to another Super Bowl, you know, he'd have to go and play the Rams and, you know, how who knows how that game would have gone, but he would have an opportunity to go back to the Super Bowl. The thing is, this guy knows how to win. And he's not a bad quarterback. You know, people that are out there with the knocks on him because, you know, he was bad in Kansas City or he was bad in St. Louis. St. Louis is a terrible, terrible thing to talk about because they had Jeff Fisher. Jeff Fisher is one of the worst coaches of all time. 
The Jags have a pretty solid coaching staff as of right now with the head coach, Doug Marone, John DeFilippo, who's familiar with Nick Foles. You know, it looks like this coaching staff has done everything in its power to make sure Nick Foles is comfortable to succeed in this Jaguar offense. And I love, love to see that. You know, where he wasn't successful, he was still young. You know, right now, though, he's getting older and he has, you know, more experience. You know, he's thrown seven touchdowns in a game. He has all these ridiculous stats, these ridiculous records. Like, he's in the record books. Like, Nick Foles is a good quarterback. Like, I, there's so there's some people, there's it's more people that are outside of Jacksonville now that just think Nick Foles is not a good quarterback and that he wasn't the answer the Jaguars were looking for. You know, we're not going to get a guy like a Drew Brees because he's locked down. We don't want to draft a guy because we don't want to develop him right now. We want to win right now, especially with, especially, I know you guys love it when I say that, uh, when, <laughs> when we have, you know, this whole situation with Yannick Ngakwe and Jalen Ramsey you know, now is the time, you know, and hopefully we extend y- Yannick and Gawkwe so that way he does play because, you know, we're going to be losing guys like Miles Jack and Jalen Ramsey next year. Like, this is the time to go out and win the Super Bowl. Like, if we were going to win a Super Bowl, realistically, this is the year to do it. I know this, to some of you, this might not be as good as the 2017 Jaguar team. <laughs> you put Nick Foles on that Jaguar team, we go to the Super Bowl, we win. This is going to be a crazy year because we have a difficult schedule. You know, we play a lot of playoff teams. But if we make it through the regular season, we enter the postseason, this is this is a team that could contend for a Super Bowl with Nick Foles at quarterback. I don't care what you say. At me all you want. But Nick Foles is going to be making all the difference. You know, John DeFil Lupo said this offense goes as Leonard Fournette goes. I think this offense goes as Nick Foles goes. What Nick Foles are we going to get? Maybe we get the St. Louis Nick Foles and he's not very good. Or maybe we fuck around and get the Philadelphia Nick Foles and then the Eagles are going to be kicking themselves for extending Carson Wentz and not Nick Foles. You know, this guy's got another good four or five years left in the tank. This is a guy that the Jags are counting on to win a Super Bowl. I think he's going to be a team captain this year. I think he's going to fuck around, do a lot of great things for the Jaguars this year. And I'm very excited to watch Nick Foles play in 2019. And that was my 2019 Jaguars position outlook for the quarterbacks. So what do you guys think? Leave your comments down below. Don't forget, you check the links down below as well. You can like me on Facebook, at Troop Talks. Follow me on Twitter, at Troop Talks. Or follow me on Instagram, at Trey Vaughn Pixley. Also, if you haven't yet, make sure you hit that subscribe button. Click the bell icon so you get notified every single time I drop a new video. I drop new content on this channel six days a week, and I'll be out working me. Them just straight facts. Thank you guys so much for watching this video, and as always, you guys have a great rest of your day.